Welcome to Church Mag Spotlight. With us today on the Church Mag Spotlight, we have Aaron Linney. Aaron is the director of church products at L- Logos Bible Software. I almost said Logos. It, it, you can say it however you want. Can you we, really? We have internal debates on it, so it's fine. Seriously, there are internal debates. I mean, this is like the inside scoop we're getting. There's internal debates on how you even say the company name. That's intense. I'm pretty sure that there's even a YouTube video about that. If you looked up, you know, how to pronounce Logos, it's uh, it, there's like two sides. Anyways. Well, we'll have to look it up and add it because yeah. that sounds very entertaining. Aaron, tell us a little bit about who you are and what you do there. Sure. So, um... As you said, my name is Aaron Linney. I have been with the Logos company for just over two months, uh, working as director of church products. In, in my previous life, I worked for Lifeway Christian Resources, uh, doing software development there. Uh, so uh, I am getting newly acclimated to all the wonderful uh, tools we have at Logos, all the the, the plans and we have for the future. And it's uh, I, I can tell you that it is an exciting time out here. Well, Logos has a, a lot of great products. So is that exactly what you're working on? Just the, the specific, you know, the cloud apps and, and these different things. Is that what your focus is? Uh, so my focus right now is on uh, two two products of ours. Uh, Proclaim, which is our church presentation software. So it's, uh, it's a tool for churches of any size to be able to go in and create a stellar looking presentation for Sunday morning, fully integrated with the desktop. So if the pastor... Uh, uh, has certain quotes he wants to pull. He can just highlight text and t- images, hit send to proclaim. And then the worship leader, whoever it is that builds the Sunday morning service, can then go into the, into the software and it shows up there. They have uh, it's, it's a cloud-based tool that can have multiple contributors. So after you set up a group, um, anyone from any machine can be editing the actual presentation. They go in Sunday morning. It's all right there. Uh, so uh, I'm wor- working to shepherd the development of that product as well as faithlife.com. Faithlife.com is our small group online tool. Uh, it's uh, for small groups and churches and events or whatever it may be for group communication. Cool. So when, when you guys approach a problem or you you know approach the next release, new features, these kind of things, when, mm-hmm. when, when there is that big update with the software. How do you guys come about that? Is it like feedback from from churches? Is it like brainstorm sessions? How do you, I mean, in your words, you said you shepherd the product. So I think that's that's a great, I mean, that's not just like some kind of Christianese word that you threw out there, I'm sure. But if you think of software development, it kind of tends to know where it wants to go. It just needs somebody to kind of direct it and, 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 and nurture it. Tell us a little bit about that process as far as coming up with the new features, uh, in the software, well, it's it's everything you said and more, right? So, um, at Logos, the 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 brilliant mastermind here is Bob Pritchett. The guy's a genius. Um, if, if you don't know him, if you've uh, he, he's got a book uh, called "Fire Someone Today." Um, wow! But, well, we'll, we'll yeah. be sure to send him a link to this video so he knows your kind words, especially since he wrote the book. What was that again? Fire somebody Fire today. Someone today. Yeah. yeah. Wow. It, You're not the, nervous at all. Actually, it it actually is a great book, um, and it's it's not as uh, mean as it sounds. The, you know the, the, that specific concept is, you know, if someone's not working out for you, make sure that they have the the best opportunities in life. Don't don't trap them in the organization if uh, if they need to be set free, right? Um, but uh, Bob's a he's a mastermind. He's brilliant. Um, I've I've said it before. He's as far as technology goes, he's almost the Steve Jobs of Christian technology, right? He uh, he, he took nothing, he went from nothing from coding Bible software in his garage to building uh, this organization called Logos. Right. Um, so he, so uh, he's just brilliant. Um, then you have people uh, like myself that uh, get to be the, the, the program managers who uh, help look and see where, where is the industry going? What are churches needing in today's day and age with as technology changes, the capabilities and um, that the people in churches, what they can do with technology changes and grows, and uh, you know the the mere idea that churches could have projectors in them with screens. You know, we've all grown up with that, but most people in churches didn't. You know, they right. remember things called hymnals, these books that you opened and they had pages in them, and and the worship leader stood and they did the that the. the 
choir directing type thing, and <laughs> and, and they How said turn to pay four thirteen, right. and then you you began to wonder, okay, there's eight hundred songs in this thing, and we only sing the same four every week. Why do I have a whole book? Uh, all that's changed in what twenty years at the most, ten years, five yeah. years. You yeah. know, um, how old is the iPad, right? Yeah. So, uh, technology changes, and so there needs to be that 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 future forward thinking, looking and saying, here's where it's going, here's how we get there. Right. Um, that's that's kind of my expertise. I, I have a master's certificate in studies of the future. Um, I'm naturally trained to look, you know, twenty years out in the future and figure out. Uh, how do we get from here to 20 years, right? right? And, and, and what, do we, what decisions do we make today that's going to influence the future of, of the business, of the industry, et cetera, et cetera. But perhaps the most important, and uh, definitely the most important, I guess, is, is the feedback from uh, our user base, right? So uh, literally just today, I was sending out emails this morning um, looking for people to connect with um, that are our active customers saying, hey, what do you need from us? How can we best serve you? How can we? How can we? How can our tools be better for your specific ministry needs? Because that's what it comes down to, right? It doesn't matter um, if we're not being able to serve the church, if we're not uh, being able to build the tools that help spread the gospel. Then, then why are we here? Exactly, exactly. So, in the process, what would you say is your is your favorite part that gets you excited the most? Is it is it putting the code together? Is it uh, is it tackling? problems in the codes like problem solving is it as you said kind of painting the picture of the future and working towards that what what aspect of this process that you do every day there what's your favorite would you say making the impossible dreams possible Mm -hmm. right you know uh (sighs) pastors worship leaders small group leaders Mm -hmm. They all have this desire to glorify God, to disciple people, to spread the gospel, to evangelize. And sometimes, more often than not, all this technology that's supposed to make things easier, all these things that are supposed to connect us, Mm -hmm. um, it just gets in the way. And it causes more problems uh, than than things it solves. So when we're able to put the efforts of an organization like Lagos behind a problem, uh, we have over 300 employees, and when we're able to put our mindset together and make tools that just make understanding the Bible easier for people um, to see that these impossible problems of how in the world do I figure this out, how in the world uh, do I do whatever it is, this random thing that my ministry needs, and we're able to help solve that for them. And we're able to help make Sunday a better experience for everyone involved. Um, that maybe the pastor gets one more hour of sleep than I before because uh, our tools made it just a little bit easier. That's what brings me to joy. That's awesome. You know, we talk about technology. We talk about ourselves, our geekery, you know, and we. I think it's easy f- for us and even people on the outside to to forget about the connection that, you know, God created us to be geeks. And what does that look like? And that, that was so eloquently said as far as what that looks like, you know, your passion for the kingdom of God and your passion for, for technology and, and how that that's all stirred up into a beautiful thing. Uh, Aaron, you and the guys there at, at Lagos are doing an awesome job with products. Last question for you here. And that is, in your free time, mm. uh, you're a family man, so obviously spending time with your fi- family is a huge priority. But when you just yes. have some time to yourself, what is it that you like to do? <laughs> when well, that this happens. past week, <laughs> this, this past week has been playing the Xbox One, which oh. I'm a proud owner of. Yes, uh, <laughs> uh, I'm a gamer at heart. Um, uh, I was a gamer before the term gamer existed. Uh, raised that way by my dad. We have um, my my dad had the Intellivision. Yes, and yeah, I had an Intellivision too. Yeah, yeah. We uh, my my dad literally owns every Intellivision game ever made with the box, with the inserts, with the overlays for the controller. Um, He even went so far as to start collecting the ones that were only released in Europe and not here, and importing them and stuff. And this was way back, you know, when I was a kid, right? right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
So, I mean, I've, I've always grown up as a gamer. Um, so, uh, for me, it, but for me, the thing about gaming that I, that I really like isn't so much even just about um, me just being alone playing a game. But again, the connectivity that it brings, right? So, the game that I played the most in the last generation of consoles was Rock Band. Because we, we had Rock Band parties almost every week at my house after church. Um, just bringing people together and having fun and, and seeing smiles on people's faces. Um, that's, uh, that's why I like gaming. Yeah. That's awesome. So did you have the voice modulator for the Intellivision? Yes. Yes. B-17 B-17 bomber. bomber. Yes. Yep. <laughs> do, do. That's awesome. Yes. Yep. That is so awesome. Which it, it was an unusual game in the fact that you could actually – beat everything you could bomb all the factories all the airports everything essentially beat the game but there was like no ending well why would it end why would you ever want it to end this is true this is true it's a world (laughs) war they don't end easily (laughs) yeah (laughs) that's awesome or auto racing every some of the tracks had like these these strips of of track in the middle of the neighborhood so if you navigated your way through the trees you could find them Uh, uh uh-huh yeah my, I think my favorite was um, oh I'm gonna get the name wrong, uh, maybe Locomotion. Mm. Do you remember that one? I don't. I don't. Yeah, I, th- I probably have the wrong name, but it was it was a, it was like a a train type game, but it was like tiles that flipped, yeah. and so you had to make sure that you like turn the tiles the right way for the taint for the train track to continue. That's awesome. Yeah. Awesome, Aaron. Thank you so much for being on the Church Mag Spotlight. Gamer, awesome software director, programmer, guy at Lagos, making awesome products. Thank you so much for being on the Spotlight, man. Thank you.